الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى عليه وصحبه أجمعين. بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran. يرى الذين كفروا أن السماوات والأرض كانت رقعا ففتكناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء هاي أترى يؤمنون. Do not the disbelievers see that this heavens and the earth were once one unit of creation and that Allah split it asunder and that he created from water all life. And you can see we're, we're coming into uh, where the Akkadians settled a couple hundred years ago and how they used water and uh, cultivate the land by using dikes and wherever there's water there's life this is why nasa anywhere they want to look for life they have to look for water that water is a sign that there's life this verse in the quran was revealed to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam over 1400 years ago he didn't have any understanding of the sciences like we do today he didn't have a microscope a telescope didn't know about the Big Bang Theory, but yet it was revealed a verse that at the time would have seemed very, very mysterious. But now scientists have said that the universe was once one unit of creation and it has been split asunder. Even Einstein said the biggest mistake that he had made in his uh, mathematical equations regarding the universe was the fact that uh, he had put a mathematical constant in. So the understanding what the, was the universe itself was eternal, that it was uh, infinite. But we know now, as Muslims, of course, we, we know that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinite, and only He has no beginning and no end. That the universe itself has a beginning and an end. Because it has a beginning, it will have an end. And we have a beginning and we have an end. And that's what we should be concerned about. Is the fact that all of these hopes and dreams that we have in this life will come to an end. Everything that we yearn for in this life will be quenched by the sands of our grave, by the dirt in our grave that will stop all of our earthly de desires and death, D-E-A-T-H, death. Dirt eats everything thou has. Every desire that you have of this earth will go with the dirt. The dirt will eat everything. It'll eat the car that you want. It will eat the bling bling you wish to have. It will eat the house as the house is made of wood. A couple thousand years from now, everything will be gone in that regard. So what will we take with us into our grave? And let's look at the word grave itself. Grave, one definition is that resting place for a dead body where people are put to rest inside the earth. But the other word in English for grave or the other definition means something of importance of ominous importance, of seriousness. It's a grave situation. Well, there's a reason that those two words exist. They mean the same thing. Our grave should be of grave concern for us. We should be worried about what we're taking into the grave. Our desires for this life aren't going to help us in the grave. They're not going to be able to do us any good in the grave. What will do us good and what will light our grave is that belief in truth, belief that we all submit to God Almighty, that our hearts don't beat because we control them, that our breath does not come in and out because we control it, the sun does not rise because we control it, and we truly cannot own any of this earth, although there are those on this earth that believe they can own it, and they can oppress others in owning it. The true light of the grave will be our belief in the Creator, the one with no beginning and no end. Even though this creation is beautiful, it's only one small part 
of the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us. And this creation means nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, it, he, that it, it is said that if this creation had any worth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wouldn't share it with those who disbelieve in Him. But since He does share it with those who disbelieve in Him, the disbeliever receives the light, the disbeliever receives the oxygen, the disbeliever receives the food from this life, from Allah. This is our chance to admit that we submit one day your heart will stop beating, not that you choose for it to stop beating, because if you could, you would choose to continue to live, but it's not your choice. So who do you submit to? You submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the reality of the situation. Open your eyes and see, and realize the signs that God Almighty has placed in front of you, and state that there is only one creator worthy of worship in Arabic, Allah, and that we believe in all of the prophets, including Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, Adam, and the seal of the prophethood, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who also validated the teachings of the other prophets when he said, La ilaha illallah, that there is only one God. Nothing you can see is God because that which you see is physical and that necessitates it having a beginning and an end and that the physical reality is subject it's subject it's not sovereign it's a subject and it's dependent and God Almighty is not dependent he is the creator and he is above his creation